Also, uh, I'm very excited about this next panel. I um, have been following Jen for, and there she is, so I'm gonna talk about her like she's still not here. I've been following Jen for some years now with like chin hands level, like you are an incredible artist and human being and um, she's a must follow for me. Um, Jen, uh, I'm gonna let you explain your background and how you came to be this cool and this amazing. But um, just know that you have lots of admirers. And I think the GISH audience in particular is going to be so excited to meet you and get to know you. Hi, everyone. So excited to be here. Charlie, you're doing great. I've been popping in all day. Everything's running very smooth. So smooth. <laughs> so smooth. <laughs> so smooth. Um, so thanks. So, first of all, thanks so much for coming here. I can't even speak English anymore. I'm just so stoked about this. Um, we uh, have been talking for a long time. Yeah, we've been friends online for years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's been we've. Uh, this is the irony too. I, we've never met in person, and we've been at Disneyland at the same time, like from afar, going like, "Oh, you're here too. Oh, cool." And then like this weird platonic meet cute. Like, could we ever hang out as friends? <laughs> Should I be that weirdo who tries to go find her? Um, your work is stunning. Uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, I used to be a theme park designer, which is why I have sort of an art background. So I was an architect for years. And then I started creating food online for fun. I started blogging like most people do. I think that's how Charlie and I originally met is through blogging. And when I started my blog, it was, you know, about food and about recipes. And one day I decided I wanted to create a Star Wars party. And this was so long ago that there wasn't even Instagram. And I Google searched and there were no Star Wars recipes online, which is really hard to believe nowadays. Um, so I thought, well, I think I'll throw my own Star Wars party and put it up on my blog and see if anyone cares about Star Wars and food. <laughs> and then lo and behold, like 100,000 views later, I realized that people loved it and people were looking for more. So I kept adding more and more to my site. And then Lucasfilm called me, Marvel called me, people, companies started calling me and asking me to create custom recipes for their websites. And that's how I do what I do. I kind of created my own weird little job after all these years. Coolest. And you're you're not allowed to talk about the projects you're working on now, but they're very, uh, you, you understand fandom on a very intimate level. I do. I, I just love fandom. I love television shows, movies. And uh, I think that the best way to involve yourself in the fandom is to give yourself to it wholeheartedly by creating things, by creating food and crafts. And, and so for many years I did not just Star Wars recipes, but comic book things, um, Walking Dead recipes, anything you can imagine I've probably made. I've made over 500 recipes, several books and uh, 120 Star Wars recipes on starwars.com. Oh my gosh, and you've, you've published books to this effect too. Can you tell us a little bit about your books? Yes, I have three books out right now. The I Love Lucy cookbook, which kind of really delves into the food on the television show. You'd be surprised. There's a lot of eating and food that goes beyond the chocolate conveyor belt and, and the uh, stomping of the grapes. There's much more than that. And then a um, Goldberg's cookbook because I love the 80s. And so that was kind of like right in my wheelhouse. And so it's based on the television show. That's awesome. Um... Go pick up those books, everybody. I mean, like, listen, I love I love baking and sweets as like a thing. So uh, there's something emotional about that. And I think for fandom too, we're like so obsessed with these stories, these like characters, the stories, you know, and you're, you're no uh, stranger to the supernatural fandom. Oh yes. Right? I, I love the show, obviously. And I was, um, a, an entertainment journalist for years too. So I've interviewed Jaron and Jensen on the red carpet and, you know, followed that fandom, which is like a family, obviously. That's why they're SPM yeah. family. And, and they're so open to, to incorporating fandom into their lives through food and fun and crafts. And I think that that's what makes for the best fandom. Oh, totally agree. And it also, I mean, like in terms of art, I feel like First of all, fan art is a legitimate art form, 1,000%. One, 1, like anybody who would talk can diminish fan art as some lesser form is barking up the wrong tree, in my opinion. And I would love to have words with those people if we weren't 
socially distance and you know dealing with a pandemic. But you would unmute um, for them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I would I would unmute and have some <laughs> thoughts to say. Um, but I think I think what I'd love to also talk about too is the power of art in helping to transform in, in movements in you know, our ability to sort of reframe some things. I mean, we're both big Star Wars fans. We're both part of that fandom. We've both been to premieres and events and stuff for that. We've both been, I don't, I mean, I don't want to brag, but I went to a, a Star Wars day at sea on the cruise once. And big deal. Um, but I'd love to sort of talk a little bit about, because the um, challenge that we've given people, you know, you're going to walk us through a little bit, um, a recipe that you have to make these amazing cupcakes. But, um, I would love to hear about how you sort of, how art is infused with some of the social issues that are going on too. Do you have any thoughts on how you've used sort of art and that work to, to spread messages or seeing that happen within fandoms? Totally, I think also hashtags are so great. I mean, I've already mm -hmm. seen so many things that have come through that people have already made you know their challenges they're well ahead they don't need yeah. me you don't need me to show you how to do this because you have done amazing work and they're all tagging me and and through the hashtag and through the tagging you can see everyone's um point of view of how they made these things yeah. and i think what you were saying too is you wanted to incorporate sort of like a message of empowerment for this particular mm -hmm. challenge and it's been really interesting to see um, people's perspectives of of how how what that means to them and how they've done that. And for me, when you brought that up, I thought, well, what would I do? So this is an example of what I would do is I took a cupcake and like um, the hostess cupcakes, which have those little curly cues on them, I, I make my own and then I write my own things on there. So I did one that says hope. Oh, beautiful. And then one that says rebel. So it's Love kind of it. like interpreting your own way of a version of empowerment and meaning and social justice and yeah. of course. Yeah, actually, I wanted to just show off a little bit some of the work that you've done. Um, if you don't mind, I just love your work and any chance I get to share it with other people always. Um, got some uh, some Loki happening over here in these cookies, yeah. huh? Can't wait. I'm so hyped for that. Totally. Yes. Uh, I, we also have a resident Loki and Misha, so I feel like there's going to be maybe some catharsis there. <laughs> um, yeah, I got the Emperor and Tauntauns. Uh, nothing feels good. That's amazing. Um, your work is so stunning. Let's let's get right into it. Let's. Uh, I'm going to pull up your the recipe if that's okay um, for your the cupcakes that we're making. So the the challenge is. Um, Women and girls are too often stereotyped as sweet and not strong, as though those two things can't coexist. Uh, let's fight the stereotype with one of the strongest generals in the galaxy, General Leia Organa. Uh, create a Princess Leia cupcake using this how-to guide uh, from Jen and uh, add a message of a new hope for women's empowerment, gender equality um, uh, and equity. Uh, post your creation and then tag Jen on the social media platforms and uh, submit the photo. So that's the that's the challenge. So let's walk through a little bit um, some of the choices that you made here and and the why and wherefore. Uh, let's see here. Here we go. So um, walk us through this. What do, what do we need? Right. So this is sort of like an easier way to make cupcakes. You can just go store-bought, you can use a mix, whatever works for you. Nothing has to be a challenge. It should be easy and fun, no matter how you do it. So if you um, choose to get your cupcakes from a store, that's totally fine, which is what I did. So I have a cupcake here, and this is just a store-bought cupcake, and they usually come like this. And then I'm going to show you, we, you just kind of take it and you just kind of flatten it out, like make it, make it about even all over, you're taking off that peak and making it flat so that you can create like a surface for her face. I know you can't really tell on this particular zoom, but basically you're trying to get it as flat as possible so that you're creating a base to make her hair, her face and all of those fun things. And then through the ingredient list, I think I told you to get some pre-made frosting, no need to make it from scratch. And then you can just use one of these tubes. And so we're gonna do her hair first. And this is very simple and you can interpret it any way you like as I saw on Instagram, you guys are doing great. 
and you just kind of start with one side of her iconic hairstyle and put some icing right there on the side. So you're doing half of her face and then you go on the other side and you do the other half and you get the hair right there. So that's basically the two sides that you get for her hair. And you can just fill it in and you can do it however you like. And then um, add eyes and these little heart sprinkles for her lips or her mouth. You can't really see that, but they're nice. And I saw that people online didn't have heart sprinkles. So they made their own or they use stars. I mean, amazing work at just doing what you want with what you have. And then the, ba the big part about Princess Leia obviously is her hair buns. And so when I first created, this is the re first recipe I ever created actually for my website. And I wanted to think of a way to make a recipe that people could do at home with the things that they had without having to buy special ingredients and things like that. So I always have Oreos at home. And yes, I stacked them like this because I home edited my entire kitchen. But nowadays they have chocolate Oreos in addition to white Oreos. So you don't even have to color them to match your hair. And the fun part about that is you just kind of add icing on the side of the cupcake, right on the paper right there. And it acts as kind of a glue. And then you take those Oreos and you stick them on the side. And then all of a sudden you have hair buns, super easy. And then I have another option for you too. If you don't want to use large Oreos and you have these tiny little baby Oreos now that they make Oreos of all shapes and sizes, you can just put them on top and then even easier, you don't have to glue anything on. You just have little hair buns on the side right there. And that's as simple as it gets. How fun. I mean, so here's the thing. Uh, there's a lot of interpretation. Normally we don't show people anything about like how, how what people are creating because we wanna create art in a bit of a vacuum. It's also part of the reason why we don't talk about how many teams there are because artists should be focusing on their art purely. And even though it's a competition, the real sort of game is, can you push your boundaries? Can you go a step further? Can you achieve something in the in the way that you wanted to, right? Um, but we I wanted to show a couple that we had just seen around if that's okay that people are creating because Yes, uh, this can be a jumping off point, you know, not a comparison, right? Yeah. Um, but uh, I just thought, I just thought, you know, these are so cool looking. Um, and I just love how, I think it's great that everyone's working together because you get inspiration on what you can do to change mm -hmm. yours or to, or if you want to do it next time. Yeah, totally. I mean, you know, small, large buns and or cupcakes. And I love the other thing too, and we'll be talking about this, I think over the next few months, especially if you, people are registered for the August hunt, we're gonna be talking a little bit about composition and about what's in the frame and like how to, how to photograph food too. So I don't know, maybe we wanna like, if you have any tips on sharing uh, how to photograph food, cause your photographs are always so, okay. so like well lit and, and composed. Yeah, um, I think that's a major component of creating food if you're doing it for online. Even if you're just, you know, serving it to your kids, you want it to look kind of nice. So it's plating, you know, lighting, all of those things. I think the mistake that a lot of people make is just kind of like carelessly taking a photo and being like, it's great, it's done. But if you really think about it, you put all that time into making it, whether it's a sandwich or an elaborate cupcake, you might as well take the time to take a nice picture so that you can remember for me, I take pictures so that I remember, oh yeah, that's how I did it. Otherwise I would have no idea. So um, a lot of people take food pictures with flash. I think that's their main mistake. Um, it kind of washes out everything and it doesn't capture all the beauty of um, the ingredients that you used. And another thing is a lot of people take photos from above flat, but if you tilt it just a little bit, like you're standing in front of it, you know, normally, then I think it gives people a better idea of what you're looking at and a better essence of the food that you've just made. That's a great point. The dimension of the food is as important as the food itself and the kind of creation that you put on the food or with the food. Totally yeah. agree. That's awesome. Um, does anybody have any questions to, to, you know, in the Q and A here, do you want to, uh, you know, uh, maybe come on and show us what you're working with here? Like if you've got something you want to like look at and, 
you know, you have an expert here to talk to potentially as tech support. Um, someone asks, uh, have you done uh, Star Wars cakes? Star Wars cakes? Yeah. Yes, I've okay. made many Star Wars cakes. <laughs> many Star Wars cakes, I figured. Um, and then, uh, let's see, we've got a, a few more. Oh, they want to know about your Supernatural. We've got a lot of Supernatural fans. I don't know if you know that, but we've got a lot of those for some reason. I don't know why. Um, but have you, what, tell us about the Supernatural uh, uh, creations you made. Um, let's see. I made a Supernatural tea party, which had five or six recipe elements um, that fans really loved. I always try and incorporate the fandom, the deep sort of deep cut things into the recipes that I make. So obviously there was pie. And then I kind of yeah. want to stretch the imagination too and use phrases or things that are repetitive within the fandom. So like um, salted and burned caramels was something that I had that was part of the party. Um, awesome. Hot cross buns, but it's crossroads buns. Um, mm -hmm. Fallen angel food cake, obviously mm -hmm. for Castiel. Um, I always try and do a bunch of wordplay, but also something that fans of the fandom will deeply love and deeply understand not really like a deep cut but more like a wink like we all know what this is and, yeah and that's how you can make it fun for yourself that's awesome um and we can find all your supernatural content on your site yes awesome so go check out uh, do you want to tell do you want to say your site just so that we have it out there in the world sure um i have a blog justgenrecipes.com um jen with two n's but mostly I put everything on my Instagram. I also uh, do a lot of Throwback Thursdays because I have so many recipes, 500 recipes. Not everyone has seen them all. So I try to bring them back on Thursdays and Fridays so people can, can see what they like. And then last week, I actually um, did an Instagram story where I asked people, what's your favorite fandom? What do you want to see? And then I pulled a bunch of recipes from years past that they could go and maybe inspire themselves to create as well. That's awesome. Um, somebody, Elizabeth is asking, what's your favorite Star Wars movie and what's your favorite Star Wars dessert? I know you've probably been asked this a million times, but do you have a favorite? Um, my favorite Star Wars movie is Empire Strikes Back um, as a sequel. I just really loved it. And I think that it goes to a lot of places. Again, I watch fandom movies differently than normal people because I watch it first and I think, well, what can I make from this? what in this inspires me. So it's usually planets or creatures or whatever. And the very first recipe that I created for starwars.com was a tauntaun cookie. Yeah. And it. it was a pinata cookie. I don't know if you know what those are, but pinata cookies were all the rage on Pinterest where you would break them open. There were like three layers and you'd break them open and then like confetti would come out. <laughs> but I thought, well, how can I do this? That would make it very me. So I made yeah. it into a tauntaun so that when you broke it open, its guts spilled out, but the guts Perfect. were like candy and gummy worms. So smells not, worse. Not gross. On smells the inside. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you, oh, have you done, oh, have you done a recipe for Winchester Surprise? I have not. Okay. I should. Well, you've got an audience for it here. <laughs> Just go, we, what you have to do is go follow Jen and then like plead her in comments over and over to, to do a Winchester surprise. Um, what's the hardest thing that you've had to bake or what's the, what was the most time consuming? The most time consuming. Um, one recipe that I made that, that I always sketch out all my recipes first. So mm -hmm. I think, how long is this going to take? How am I going to do this? And the one that I always bring up is I'm a big Walking Dead fan. I actually hate zombies and horror, which makes no sense, but I love that show and it very much inspires me. So Halloween time, obviously, I wanted to make a burnt looking meatloaf that looked like a zombie foot. Nice. So I took ground beef and I molded it into like a foot and I used onions as toenails that are quite realistic. And when I baked it off, it like looked very real and so I put it on the middle because everything I make my kids have to eat so everything is tried true and tested because my kids have to okay eat and there is no wasting here so the Kid tested mom approved yep so the zombie foot was in the middle of the table for dinner and the kids were very horrified but they said it tasted good so that's all that's, that matters I mean that's what it counts right uh, we did we did feet loaf as a challenge one time, and yeah. those submissions were alternately both disgusting, but also looked great. Yeah, uh, I love meatloaf personally, 
Um, but when I saw that, like the toenails with onions and it started to get into the detail work, I was like, I'm fine, I'm fine. <laughs> um, uh, someone asked, do you accept interns? Uh, but anyway, people are, are now clamoring to work with you, obviously. This, this audience makes art out of food and they oh. do it in a way that's also like, everyone has to eat it and they have to take care of like, making sure they're not wasting anything. But I've been, this audience- I've been following Gish for years and I've never done it because I, don't have the time to make Skittles portraits. I love looking at them and you yep. guys are the best, but I'm intimidated by the Skittles. There's some intimidating work and that's, yeah, that's that's the, on the honest truth. Uh, let's see what else, we'll do a couple more. And then uh, maybe if you guys wanna raise your hands um, and we'll pull a couple of people in who are mid work and then, and then call it a day. But if you wanna raise your hand, if you're in the middle of making this or if you've already made it, you wanna show it and sort of discuss it a little bit. Um, but maybe one more, one more, uh, my kids. Oh, my kids. Okay. Da, 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 da. Any Crowley, any Crowley items? No, I don't. I'm trying to think that. I don't know. I've made so many. I really have to go back and look. Yeah, no worries. Okay. Um, you've, you've made so many things. There's just, there's so many Sometimes questions about specific fandoms Sometimes now. I forget what I've made and then I look and Google it. And I'm like, oh, someone already made this. Oh, it was me. That happens to me all the time. So yeah. I, I have a terrible memory. So I apologize. Awesome. Well, that's all right. Don't worry about it. We're, I mean, I don't remember anything I'm talking. I've, I've been talking for four or five hours now. I don't know what I'm doing. Happy Melissa, morning. hi. Hi. So um, we're attempting you have a helper to there. Yes, I have two. This one's decided she's doing a Skittles cupcakes. That sounds awesome good. Idea. <laughs> My so, youngest would love that too. So what do you got going? Well, we are we are attaching our cookie ears at the moment. Our only problem is that we are in Texas and my buttercream melted. So it's all separated oh no. and fun looking. <laughs> Jen, got any ideas about that? How can we but help? they still love it. And they Just love throw it in the fridge. Process. Throw it in the Just fridge and it'll be perfectly fine. <laughs> yeah, maybe throw it back in the fridge for a little bit, yeah? Sorry. Am I, am I? It's a hot mess in the kitchen. <laughs> I mean, you just described me as well. Daddy, they look like they're coming along. I'm sorry. <laughs> Wait a minute. There's some sabotage happening. Yeah, it's, all right. it's just the Oreo thieves. <laughs> Eating all the hair buns. Well, good luck. Uh, Jen Thank says you. to put them in the, in the refrigerator. If you can yeah. for a little bit to have them like stick a little bit. Yeah, because all those, those buns are going to fall right off. Plus, <laughs> you have people who are going to eat them all before they're even, even done. Yeah, this is batch number two, actually, because I made stuff earlier that got eaten. <laughs> nice. Nice. Well, good <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. Bye. Uh, well, Jen, this has been this has been awesome. Thank you so much. So I just want to make sure we uh, also promote where we, we can find you here real quick. So if you want to make stunning creations uh, like these, I mean, the the heart is just such a little a little touch. It's just this little cool, like I'm so I love minimalism. I love the idea that you can put like a little bit in it communicates a lot and I feel like this communicates yeah. a lot to me and also I try and make recipes for people who are busy and don't have the time and so it's yeah. like you know what you want to make something quick just use what you got in the kitchen well go follow Jen at just Jen on Twitter very active over there uh, but Instagram in my opinion is where it's at like go follow on Instagram because you will be inspired you will see all kinds of cool messages and information and just uh, another fan like us, but doing some amazing things and working close in on with the fandom too. It's, you're such a creative person and we're so thankful for you. Thank you. And I made you this Charlie cupcake, but I have to eat it. You can't have it, sorry. That's the <laughs> cruelest thing that's happened to me all day. And there's but been a lot of cruel things. Out of love for you. <laughs> that's so nice. Thank you, Jen. And I can't wait to uh, one day give you a hug and, and hang out at Disneyland. You're, I. Uh, we I didn't get to go on Rise of the Resistance yet, so I'm very I'm very butthurt about it. Yeah, we'll do it together. That would be amazing. That's perfect. <laughs> All right, thank you, Jen. Thanks so much thank for coming you. by. Good luck, everyone. <laughs>